Hi everybody, today we're going to learn how to add a border to your objects that you're designing in Inkscape. Now you might want to do this in order to make, in my case, my logo or your logo stand out. For instance, if you were going to cut this out of vinyl and put it up on a wall with a color that is somewhat similar to this purple, the purple would not stand out. So you might want a white border behind it. So there's several ways that you could you can make a border behind objects in Inkscape. You can uh, modify the stroke property. Um, you can use outset here underneath path. And then you can also um, do dynamic offset. And we're gonna focus on dynamic offset today. So the way you do this, um, since I would like to add a white background, the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, or a white border to this, the first thing I'm gonna do is change the overall background so that it is not white, so that I can at least see the white border that I'm adding to it. And I do that by going to File, Document Properties, and then coming over here to Background Color, and then just choose a color that you're, you'd like your background to be. Next, we're going to open up our layers. We've got this first layer here that I've named Logo. We're gonna add one layer, so we're gonna call this a border. And uh, the very first thing that we're gonna do when we're selected as a logo layer is highlight everything that you want to add a border around. Right click on it and click duplicate. And now we have a copy, an exact copy, in the exact location of where it needs to be. If you accidentally move it, away from uh, where it was initially, do control Z or um, click undo at edit undo. And then we're gonna move this, since this the highlighted items are gonna become our border, we're gonna right click on it and click move to layer and move it to our border layer. So you can see if I hide the logo layer, we only have, we have a logo, our border here, um, or what's going to become our border. And then if I hide the border layer, we have a logo here as well. So let's go ahead and hide our logo layers because we're gonna be just working on the border for a moment. And we're gonna turn everything white because we want our border to be white. So we're gonna click on our objects individually and we're gonna go to object, fill and stroke. And we're gonna come here and see, okay, so the color is defined by the stroke instead of the fill. So we're gonna make this white on the HSL uh, section. So we have a white square here. I'm gonna go to our M, do the same thing. I'm gonna go to our text. Okay, so the text color is defined by the fill instead. So let's turn that to white. So now we have a white border. If we go back to our layers down here, Right now we have the border on top of the logo layer, which we don't want. We want the border to be behind it. So I'm gonna drag border down to below logo. So our logo is on top of border. And so you can't see the border right now because it's hidden by the logo layer. So let's turn off the logo layer again. Let's click on an item that we wanna add an offset or um, a border to. We'll go to path and we'll click dynamic offset, and this is where we actually add our border. And then uh, when, after you click dynamic offset, you're gonna lose all your other uh, anchors and just get this one right here. And this is how you adjust the offset. So you come here and you can make it as big or as small as you would like. So we're gonna give it maybe around there. We'll turn our logo on and off to kind of see if it's about where we want it. So if I made it too big, we'd actually not have a border and it would get into our other items. So let's go ahead and do it, what, maybe around right there. Turn this off again. So that, that works great. That's a great dynamic offset. Let's go down to our text. Or that's a great border for the outside of our square up here. So let's look at the text real quick. Let's do the same thing. We click on our text. We go to path, dynamic offset. Oops. 
wrong layer. I forgot to turn this off. Let's go to our white text that's going to be the border. Go to path, dynamic offset, and now we can make it a little bigger. Turn on our lo logo layer, and you can see we made a border for the text in our logo. Now, all that's left to do is to make a border for these internal components. There's several ways that we could do this. We could do dynamic offset like we've been doing before. I personally prefer if we just fill in the entire area behind this M as white um, because the borders start to get cluttered. So let me show you what that looks like uh, to fill it in as all white. We'll go ahead and click on our object, uh, the um, square border. We'll go to fill. We don't write at the moment. We don't have any fill, no paint. So we're going to click fill right here and it's going to fill it all with white. So if we go back down here and turn our logo layer on, we now have it all filled in with white behind our M logo. This is usually where I would stop because it's where I like it at the moment. But if you did want to do an internal dynamic offset type of border, what you would do, so let me undo what I just did. We'll get rid of this fill. So what you would do is I would select my outside border here. I'm going to duplicate it. So now I've got two of them, but this anchor is still here. And you can only grab this anchor when you're under the edit paths by node cursor, which you can see is a thinner arrow than the other cursor up here, which is the select and transform objects cursor. So if I click on this one, there's no anchor right there that I can move. I can only move it around. So let's go to here, make our anchor show up on our duplicated square, bring it down a bit. Let's check where it is by turning on our logo layer. So it's not quite as far as we would like. looks like we can still work on it while the logo layer is on. So maybe roughly right there in the border looks decent. So that, that doesn't look too bad, but the, the area where it gets cluttered for me is when we go, let's turn this back off to the M. We do the same thing, dynamic offset. Now it, it connected down here. So we're gonna, if we wanna get rid of that, we can, uh, but I'll show you that here in a bit. So let's go ahead and make the outside border of the M. Let's turn on our logo, see what it looks like. Okay, that's, it, it's a little funky because there's this bottom component down here and uh, let's get it to where we would like. So it, it, I'm not exactly, because if I go to where I want it, then in here it doesn't connect with the M. So I'm gonna show you how to edit your border if it's not working exactly how you would like, if you have a, comp a relatively complex component like this. So you grab this, bring it in, to roughly where you want it on the all the edges. We're not going past these corners right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the logo layer. We'll come here. We're gonna make sure our M is selected. Go from click path and then object to path. So you can see we have a lot more anchor points now. Now we can no longer directly edit the dynamic offset. All we can do is edit our exact path that this vector is is defined by so uh, we'll go ahead and just move these dots around until we get the right position that we want and i believe so i'm going to zoom in here if you move these it, it, it kind of changes the curvature of the corners and so i usually just move these diamonds right here and then uh, tweak these little circles if I need to. So let's go to the other side and do the same thing. Looks like we've got three over here instead of just two. Now let's turn on the logo layer, turn on our logo layer and see where we're at. So we're a little too far on this one. Bring that in. There we go. We have an external border on the M. This one we don't want here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this. We're also going to, oops, we're gonna hold shift and click on this. So we have both of those selected. We'll come up here to 
break path at selected nodes. Click it. Oops. And I believe we're good. Hmm. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off our logo layer. Select this. Go back to our other cursor, select the internal M border. We're gonna duplicate it as well. Oops, no, so we're gonna undo that. because We don't wanna do that. Instead, we're gonna bring over a, a copy of this M because since we turned this other white border to a path, we can't change a dynamic offset, which is what we want to do. So we're gonna copy this M, so we're gonna duplicate it. So we have a copy of the M here and we're going to move to our border layer. Okay, it's moved there. So if we turn off our logo, we still have an M here. So we're gonna turn this white like we did before. And we're gonna go to path since it's already selected and click dynamic offset. Bring it down instead of up. Turn on our logo layer, see where we're at. We're pretty close to where we need to be. Do the same thing. We'll go to path, object to path, turn off our logo layer. Let's bring these down a little bit. Until they're just right. And there you have it. We have a border around every object in our file. Um, like I said, I prefer the other, um, just filling this internal section in with white, um, but that is how you use dynamic offset to create a border behind your objects in Inkscape.